Welcome back to Excel 2010 for Beginners, brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. This is Lesson 4 of 12. If you landed on this lesson first, you can click on the link in the video window above to start back at the beginning. In Lesson 4, you learned about the formula bar, the parts of a spreadsheet, rows, columns, cells, the mouse pointer, and the sheet tabs. Now, so far in today's lesson, Almost all of the features we've discussed are the same for most of the Microsoft Office applications. You'll find features like the ribbon, the title bar, the scroll bars in several different applications, including Word and PowerPoint. There are some features that are unique to Excel. For example, the formula bar. The formula bar is used for displaying the data or the formula that's in a specific cell. For example, right here in this cell, I can see the number 56. If I click down here on this cell, A5, the formula bar displays a formula. There's something in A5 aside from just a number. And that's what the formula bar is good for. It's for showing you what's actually in that cell. You can use the formula bar to edit your formulas by simply clicking right here. And you'll see some other buttons pop up, this little F of X button, the check mark, the X. We'll talk about these in future lessons. Now, below the formula bar is where you're going to do most of your work. This is called the spreadsheet area, or just the spreadsheet. Now, a spreadsheet consists of a couple of different things. A spreadsheet consists of columns that go vertically and rows that go horizontally. Each column has a letter on top of it. For example, this is column B. This is column F. I have numbers in column A, and so on. Each row has a number to the left of it. You can see that's row 2, row 3, row 5, and so on. And if you scroll down, you'll see there are lots and lots of rows and you can scroll to the right and see there are lots and lots of columns. Where a row and a column intersect, that's called a cell. You indicate a cell by naming its column and its row. For example, right now, I have cell C2 selected. This is cell E3. H2, and so on. The value in cell A3 is 34. That is how you name a cell. You'll find the name of the current cell in the name box. You can see as I move from cell to cell, the value in the name box changes. Right now it says C2. Over here it says E3. That's the name box right here. And later on, I'll show you how you can actually name your own cells. The little plus sign floating around on the screen is called the mouse pointer. The mouse pointer usually looks like a white plus, but it can change depending on what you're doing. If you move over the ribbon, for example, it changes into an arrowhead. If you move between two column heads right here, you can see the mouse changes into a little black double pointing arrow. That's so you can resize a column. If you hover over the top of a column header, you can see it changes into a black downward pointing arrow. That's so you can select the entire column or you can select an entire row. And we'll see how this works in more detail a little bit later on. If you click in the formula bar, you'll see you have a blinking cursor. That's so you can edit your formula or the data in a cell. And again, don't worry about all these specifics right now. We'll talk about all this stuff in future lessons. I just want you to be aware that the mouse pointer will change based on where you happen to be pointing in Excel. Underneath the spreadsheet, you'll find three sheet tabs. They're labeled Sheet 1, Sheet 2, and Sheet 3. In Excel, the file that you're working with can be comprised of one or more sheets or spreadsheets. You can switch between these sheets by simply clicking on the sheet tab. There's sheet 2 
and sheet 3. And this is handy because you can have some information on sheet 1, let's say January's information, and then switch over to sheet 2 and put February's information on sheet 2. So there's sheet 1 and sheet 2. You can add more sheets if you want. You can delete sheets. You can rename them and change the sheet tabs. And we'll see how all this works in a future lesson. And of course, you can get creative with your sheets. For example, in this workbook, I've created three different sheets, one for 2010, 2009, and 2008. The sheets are all very similar, but I've changed some of the formatting and the colors to make the workbook look a little more professional. And yes, of course, you'll learn how to do all of this in upcoming lessons. This is the end of lesson four. You can click on the link above in the video window to jump to lesson five. Also, don't forget to subscribe and get notified when I release new free tutorials. For more information on my Excel courses, visit my website at 599cd.com slash xyt2010.